It's season 666 of Baywatch, everyone. The number of the beast. <laughs> so let's dive right in, shall we? One of Baywatch's many sponsors for season 6 was a hair care product called Shockwaves, apparently prompting an emphasis on hair-related wraparound sequences. Keep an eye out for this exciting development, I guess. It's out with the old and in with the new, so between seasons we lost and gained two lead characters. Garner has officially moved on to greener pastures in Baywatch Nights, and Eyebrows has sakrut his last blue. He will make sporadic appearances throughout the season, though, so we're not quite done with him yet. As for David Charvet stepping down from this role, from what I've read, he wasn't really happy being there by the end. He felt the scene wasn't really him, and he shifted focus to his music career. Yes, I know, another one. But he seems to have had some success with it, especially in his home country of France, where he had three songs in the top 20. And after listening to a few of his tracks myself, he doesn't sound bad. So hey, I'm glad he pursued what he was passionate about. According to Douglas Schwartz, they were worried about losing Pamela Anderson and needed a new hot blonde to intimidate her by hinting she could be replaced, because that seems like a good working environment. So they made Neely Capshaw a main character and recast her with Gina Lee Nolan, who was spotted by one of the casting directors as a Price is Right model. Previous to this, she'd had no acting experience and was actually terrified of the camera, which wasn't helped by David Hasselhoff constantly ad-libbing lines and throwing out scripts. She wanted to leave after her first year, and I kid you not, they brought in a hypnotist to help her overcome her stage fright. It seems to have worked, because she ended up sticking around for three seasons and starring in Sheena for two years. And personally, I don't know what she was worried about, because I think she's great, and this version of Neely is one of my favorite characters. Oh, and also Cody is here. Trap Beneath the Sea! Mitch has worn many hats in his lifetime. Architect, Navy SEAL, Iron Man champion. But his true calling has always been the sea. His father went to his Emmy cancer grave, knowing that Mitch chose his lifeguard career above all else. So anyway, one of Mitch's plots in this two-parter is about how he's seeking a second career because Baywatch Nights premiered the following week. My seniority put me on top of the list. I could work the beach as much as I do now and still have time to pursue another career. What other career? I don't know, maybe a uh, private eye. Imagine you knew nothing about Baywatch Nights and you heard this line. Mitch might as well have said he's pursuing a career as a trapeze artist. Mitch, you can't be a lifeguard during the day in a private eye at night. Why not? Actually, it's called Baywatch Nights because you work in an office above a club called Nights, not because- Sorry, gotta go! Meanwhile, Cody. I'm Cody. I'm gonna join an Olympics. I don't even know why. Cody just seems to be universally hated in the Baywatch fandom. The moment I saw him, I instantly realized, as if by instinct, this was going to be a rocky relationship. Visuals alone told me everything I needed, which may never be backed up in actual show canon, but I know it in my heart to be true. He is intensely stupid. Cody is being creepily watched by a bunch of little girls on Stephanie's swim team. Except for this one, she seems kind of scared. Oh, and just as a throwaway line, Stephanie mentions she made the Olympic swim team the year the US boycotted it? Excuse me, this seems highly unlikely that Stephanie hasn't lorded this over Mitch by now. Try and keep up, Mitch. Are you intimidated by swimming with an Olympic athlete? You mean Olympic failure, you call me? Hey! <sighs> Stop giggling and pay attention to me, children, or I'll spoil you, 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 you. Cody is here on a scholarship, but unfortunately, he didn't quite make the team to even train for the Olympics. You know, I'd believe the only way he'd get a scholarship is via athletics, but if he's not even great at that, I don't think he's got anything going for him. According to his coach, except the will to win, he has it all, a claim I find to be dubious. While he's spilling all of Cody's deepest, darkest backstory to just any ding-dang person who asks, he tells Stephanie Cody lost his will to win after his parents died in a flood the previous year. Why do bad things happen to good people? You don't know if he's good. Stephanie is inspired to coach him herself. She can fix him! This instantly attracts CJ, who can't resist a man who's fallen apart. When can I meet him? I thought you were mending a broken heart. Well, what better way than to meet someone new? And relationship with eyebrows swept away. Zoop. Hey, speaking of big fat cheaters, Logan is smacking lips with some other Sheila. 
Am I a main character yet? Oi, get out of here and go back to California Dreams. In true Logan morally ambiguous fashion, he's using this girl for his own personal gain. Her father has a lot of money, and Logan's hoping he'll invest it in his new fashion business. Uh, what? I don't... Wh why is Logan a fashion designer now? Like, maybe you thought I was stretching things by questioning them giving Logan the AIDS-related plot, but you gotta admit it's a little suspect that their only known gay actor at the time is suddenly a fashion designer out of nowhere. Oh, fuh, 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 fuh. Hello, it's me, Rich Father. Didn't you used to be Eyebrows' second dad, who was also rich and disapproving? We don't talk about him anymore. Australian fashions, is that it? Mm, Aussie beachwear, sir. You'd only see bikinis like this in Australia. That'll be 10 million didgeridolaroos, please. Yep, that's the shot. That's the shot from your demo tape that's really gonna sell these looks, Logan. God, what even is this tape? I feel like we're 10 montages deep already, and we're only 13 minutes in. Logan claims he directed the demo and designed the clothes, but it turns out the genius behind all this mediocrity was none other than his good friend Gator. You remember Gator? He was that other Australian guy. He's from Australia. Oi, I can't believe you didn't tell anyone about me yet, Logan. Not you. Honest Logan, that's what they call you. Now you're liar, Logan. A liar. That's you. That's right, that's what I do. Gotta love me. Gator is tired of playing second fiddle to Logan, who bemoans the sacrifices he's made by cheating on Caroline to help their business. He'll tell Investor Daughter about his partner once they have the money, and hopefully she'll break up with him and get with Gator. So, if that's the plan, then why didn't Gator just seduce her himself and cut out the middleman? Is there some advantage to thinking Logan did all this when they look like they came out of the same deceitful Australian cloning facility? Oi, I'm great at business! Meanwhile, a rattlesnake. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, there's no reason for this to be slow motion whatsoever. It's as pointless as this scene. When I was eight years old, I saw the ultimate movie, The Maltese Falcon. For the next six or seven years, I wanted to be Private Eye. <coughs> Bullshit. Speaking of good writing... Well, if it wasn't for these Oreos, I'd be completely depressed. Yeah, 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 girlfriends. Girlfriends. Off screen, Stephanie has introduced herself to Cody, become his coach, and hired him on as a working observer for a busy day at the beach. Would have been a good way to get to know the character if we'd actually seen him overcome his dead parent fear and decide to let Stephanie coach him, but whatever. Who needs real introductions when you could just make abs a character trait? Uh, wow. Hi, Cody Madison. How's it going? Completely rebuffed, as he should be. Caroline's kinda all over Cody, and Logan's a hypocritical cheater McCheater face. It's hard to decide who's the least likable protagonist. You, you disgust me, boyfriend! I can be creepy too. Everyone acting like Cody is God's gift to women makes me fully believe he isn't the only one dropped on his head at some point in his life. Morning, Cody. Ready? What's up, Logan? Do it. Whatever. So get this. They basically tell us the ending of the last episode meant zilch. The tape was recorded illegally and can't be used in court, Neely is still suing for sexual harassment, and Eyebrows, so distraught over having to resign, left for France in a baguette-filled rage. L-O-L. Oh, and apparently, in a bid to get her to drop the lawsuit, the county is forced to rehire Neely, who was still fired for that evidence they got that apparently didn't mean anything. I thought the whole point of her suing was to make a ton of easy money, and if she was fired for illegal evidence, she could add another lawsuit to the mix, but I guess a hefty lifeguard salary for people who hate you will do. Why be good when you could be bad at being evil? Then we're transported into a lifeguard hell dimension. I don't know. God, why is part one not over yet? After a hard day of summoning the dark forces, Logan chastises Neely for saying she rescues people for the rush. Because the true motivation should be getting laid, I guess. 
But little does Logan know, he might be rotten, but he's never met a true bitch like Neely before. You don't think the Caroline would be hurt if she found out about you and, uh, Beth Canfield? What the didgeridoo? Gator spilled the beans to Neely, continuing his trend of randomly having relationships with blonde side characters that really have nothing to do with him, and in exchange for her secrecy, Neely wants Logan to basically speed up her lifeguard redemption arc. Then I can continue to save lives. Ooh, I'm so naughty. Anywho, Cody and Neely are shooing away some makeout couples from an oil rig, and the audience is reminded that Baywatch Ocean is just lousy with old sea mines. Now they're trapped beneath the sea! It only took two million hours to get here! All I can say is thank God for slow motion swimming footage, because that's gonna make the second half go by a whole lot quicker in this review. If you thought the last episode had too many waste of space time fillers, just wait until you see the swaths of screen time filled by crane footage. Cody, Neely, and some randos are trapped in an oil rig that's filling with water. I don't blame these guys for freaking out. If Cody was all that stood between me and certain death, I'd be losing it too. Don't worry, it's just water. I drink this stuff all the time. At least he speaks in a calming manner? Calm down! Calm down and stay with him! You're right, you're right. There's an explosion! Grab her! Oh, grab her! Grab her! Needless to say, time is of the essence for our, uh, heroes? But luckily, Baywatch's favorite thing will protect them. We got air pockets. And CGI is becoming easier to implement, so damn it, they're gonna use it. Okay, now, how did that guy survive that one? He should be the wife from Signs by now. While Cody and Neely attempt to save Mr. Pancake, the others on the surface are setting up a rescue. And oh man, you got Shippy, Numi, and Ledge Muscleman, the dream team. Basically, they evoke the opposite feeling of Cody. Unfortunately, I'm not even kidding, part two is just... It's just this. I'm literally 50% into the episode, and a majority of it has been diving footage. It is one of the most boring and drawn-out rescues I've ever seen. What an anti-climax. Hey, it's me, Cody! I'm here to save you! Ah! Okay, we're gonna on now is as good a time for drinking as any. Look how strong I am! I'm lifting this all by myself! Ten years of my life later, everyone is out but Mitch, and he might just be the one fatality in this ill-fated episode. Will Baywatch Nights never be conceived? Oh yeah! Saved by the Dream Team! This episode has turned itself around. Just kidding, it's nearly over. Wow, all of this has really made me think about how I want to do my spin-off show now. Well, our heroes had a lot to prove. Cody with his lost motivation, Neely's evil drunken ways, Logan and his seedy fashion scheme. But if this hour and a half of television has proved anything, it's that at the end of the day, they're all damn good lifeguards. She's a damn good lifeguard. Yes, indeed, they've risen to the top. So that's why Cody lost his scholarship, Logan's deal falls through when Gator sells him out, and everyone who hated Neely before still does. No good deed goes unpunished. Beep beep, bitch. It's kind of complicated because, you see, the car doesn't actually belong to me. It belongs to a detective agency. Well, Garner and I, we met this woman, and I'll fill you in later. This sure would be awkward if Baywatch Nights premiered between this two-parter and we didn't even air the pilot until episode 8. <laughs> well, see you in the funny papers! Next time on Baywatch, it's Baywatch Nights, people. Drama, action, confusion! Nights will never be the same. <laughs>